Good afternoon, everyone. We have only six LSE members present. Uh, we're going to be waiting to complete quorum. Mr. Cos is present uh, here in person. Okay, so that means we have seven members. Thank you, Dr. Vilches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we complete quorum. Okay, so we complete quorum. We have eight members present. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. The LLC of Steinmans can call this meeting to order. It is five and two minutes. Can you do a roll call for to take uh, attendance, Mr. Caputi, please? Uh, yes. Thank you. Dr. Anna Vilches? Yes. You're in person, right, or online? I'm in person and online. Okay. Ms. Lopez? Present. Mr. Keyless? I'm here. Ms. Odin? Mr. Koss? Go ahead, Mr. Koss. He's present. Okay. Uh, Ms. Dunn, Mr. Rodriguez, oh, yes, you're, and you're virt you're not in the room, right? You're virtual. Yeah, I'm virtual. I got Miss Adul uh, Long Odin on the phone actually. She's having a hard time joining, so I have her on speaker here. Okay, I'll, I'll skip back around to her. Okay, here in a minute. Uh, Ms. Merlos, here. Hello. Uh, I'm Vanessa. here. Okay, gotcha. Ms. Vanessa Ortiz. Ms. Itzel Rodriguez. Ms. Destiny Johnson. Present. And Ms. Hansen. I'm here. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hansen. And then Ms. Uh, Odin. Here. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Odin Rodriguez. Thank you. So let's see. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, ten present, and three absent. So we have Thank you. Uh, we have quorum, and we continue with our agenda, which is approval of the LLC agenda. I second. Yes, I present the motion to approve the agenda as submitted. I second. Mr. Rodriguez, second. Uh, open for discussion. I have Mr. Aquiles raise his hand. Go ahead, Mr. Aquiles. Yes, I just wanted to know, um, is this meeting being recorded? It will now. Give me one second. 
Thank you for asking. So it's, it, there's a delay. Hold on. It just keeps. Okay, now it works. It works now. Are we open for discussion on the agenda? Yes. I need to. Um, well, I know there's a motion on the table, but I, I need to request uh, an amendment, uh, several amendments because um, of the steam fest. And the steam money, we have to move a couple of lines over. So um, the steam coordinator put in uh, some requests for LSC approval for today since we have a special meeting. So I, I'm for today's meeting since we have quorum. Uh, Mr. Aquiles? Yeah, I, I, I believe that uh, on special meetings, only the items uh, on the special meeting are the ones that are supposed to be uh, discussed. The 48 hours notice, yeah. Thank you. I'll just have to um, either save it for March or have to call a uh, ask for a special meeting for these amendments. Mm -hmm. to be because mm -hmm. the test is coming up. Yes, we can call another special meeting to go over those items. Uh, close discussion. Roll call for vote, please. Uh, Dr. Vilchez? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Mr. Keyless? Taking that as a yes, Mr. Keyless. Uh, I'll say yes. Ms. Ms. Odin? Yes. All right. <laughs> Mr. Koss? Give him a second. Go ahead. Yes, he said yes. Can you say it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's best if he says it. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Uh, Ms. Merlos? Yes. Ms. Hansen? Yes. And Ms. Johnson, Ms. Destin Johnson? Yes. So 10 in favor of the agenda, zero no passes. Motion carried. We move to the next item in the agenda. which is public participation. And if anyone that is on the meeting virtually wants to give any comment, you can write down your name on the in-call messages and we go for from there. And also I receive an email to be read in this meeting. Give me one second. Okay, so I'm ready to read it. My name is Walter Bresky, and I am a community member and former CPS employee. What concerns me about this new administration in LLC is for every step forward, both take, they take two, three steps backward. One, how hard it is to for the administrate to the administration and to tech coordinators and AP to put up the statements athletic games schedules on the school calendar online. Is administrator awake and listening to your teachers when they make this request over and over all at these meetings? Is anyone aware CPS create a new website for use by each school to utilize to post team information? Two, it seems that it seems the names or positions have changed by the February to send continuous assignments. How on earth can an attendance coordinator that plead with this LLC to help him and other increase 
third quarter attendance last school year, last school year, and clean up the halls be elevated to the social climate coordinator position with a 20,000 race, especially as he and others had no idea how to fix things. Now this person is in charge of trying to clean up the halls. Principal Belches, it is true this same employee without an ISB or IB certification was allowed to travel to Texas and other states for IB professional development. Also, Principal Belches, it is true you once had a sign posted in or near your office that read Latino or Latina boss or something to that effect. And how can a special educator classroom assistant, SICA, be elevated to a clerk, uh, one bilingual position hallway throughout this school year and not have the one year of clerk experience? This employee received a 20,000 raise when they could have easily been literally moved to an assistant clerk position for the similar pay as a SICA. Then the 20,000 could have been used for other positions or things like, or things at Steinman's, like security. As Steinman has a lot of clerks, again, all by indicators. And the email doesn't finish, but the two minutes, it's up. And that's all I was able to read. And with that, we, uh, we align with the Open Meeting Act. And we read the message. So I don't know if we have any more people on the chat who like to speak. Okay, so we move to the next item in the agenda. which is review and amend the bylaws. And I would like to specify something clear for everyone that we are not going to make, uh, we're not going to uh, approve this bylaws today. We are gonna write down the draft to be presented to law department. And after that, we will be able to vote on it. So I sent the bylaws uh, an hour ago I'm not sure if everyone had the bylaws copy already previous to this meeting or have had access to those bylaws. Okay. So in our bylaws I specify number one, LSE membership. LSE members will complete required training and submit required forms with required time. Failure to do so will result in consideration for dismissal. B, members will be removed if members fail to maintain acceptable attendance per guideline. One, miss three consecutive meetings. And two, miss five meetings in a 12 month period. C, members will be considered for an immediate removal for voting, for voting the LSE confidentiality policy. Bylaw number two, the LSE secretary will post all LSE notices and required by law 48 hours previous to scheduled meeting. Three, the LSE agenda in previous minutes will be emailed to all LSE members 24 hours prior to a scheduled meeting. The secretary is responsible for col collaborating with members to complete LSE agendas. Four LSE meetings, notice agendas and minutes will be typed and posted on the school website. The LSE secretary will also ensure that LSE chair documents are maintained, backup, in a separate secure location, minute, meeting minutes will be fully transparent to the public and posted 24 hours after approved by members. 
A. Members of the public may speak in person virtually or by submitted a writing document to be read. B. Each member of the public will receive two minutes to address the council within the required time allocated for the public. C. 15 minutes will be allocated for public participation. D. To ensure complete fairness, the LLC cannot and will not extend the time of any public speaker. E, the LLC will not engage in with the within dialogue with the public speaker or discussion during the meeting. The LLC may choose to take or the on the issue in a further LLC meeting. Six LLC committee and invite guests will receive five minutes to communicate during at the conclusion. No, give me my phone, please. Uh -huh. Thank you. At the conclusion of each committee member, guests briefly briefing. Seven, the principal will receive 30 minutes to complete principal's report, budget transfers, and other voting items will be discussed separately. These items are not considered part of the principal report, therefore will not count against the allocated time. And eight, no LSC meetings will extend beyond two hours. Those were the bylaws were approved in July by some of the members of this LSC. But since uh, we are functioning in a, in a different way, one of the amendments we need to do is go, going to point number two, which instead of the LSC secretary is the LSC chairperson. Because I've been, do, I've been working doing that. So the second is the number three, which is kind of the same thing in regard of the agenda. And that's exactly the same thing, is the chairperson who's, who's has been working to do that. The person who has been posting the minutes and agendas of the LLC has been the principal of the school. She has been supporting me to complete that. And go ahead, Miss Southern. Okay, the question I had also was about um, a LSC member could miss five meetings. That's a bit extreme. I mean, we only have like 10 total. So someone can go AWOL for five months and then they're kicked off? Miss Oden, those are the bylaws were established by the previous LSC. Right. And when we have the organizational. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. No, I was saying, aren't we? That's what we're talking about now so that they could be amended. Because we have to vote on those, correct? Right. Okay. We can decide to make, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, and technically I read it for you all because uh, I'm not sure if, uh, for example, you and Ms. Kansan and other members knew about what it was in our bylaws. Because you were not part of the LSC yet when we voted on it. Right. And so now we're up for another vote of the bylaws so that we either going to keep those or change some things. And one of the things that I was just questioning was five absences. Consecutive. Yes, and there's something that uh, uh, LSC Relations has in their own bylaws, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yes, so this was really adopted the previous LLC, but actually it would go to the to the guide LLC relations used to used to have in the past appear mm -hmm. there. Okay. So, and they are, yes, and they are five consecutive uh, um, absence in a period of 12 months. Yeah, I just, I think that that's extreme. 
Yes, I mean, you're right, but I mean, it's probably also relations of protocol in some cases, and is there any part of our, of our bylaws? So now okay. just, you know, we can we can make this decision to amendment and and be removed. Okay. Thank Do you. Do you have any? You're welcome. Do you have no, any other question? No, that was the only question. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anyone else? Go ahead, Mr. Caputi. Uh, I just wanted to clarify for Ms. Odin, if it helps. Um, you can't miss five in a row. Uh, it's five total in a 12 month period, so they can be interspersed or three consecutive. So if someone oh. misses, yeah, so if someone misses three in a row, they go on a little streak. Okay. They only have to get to three before, you know, take a look at things. But, okay. Yeah. So okay. That, miss, I was thinking like somebody could just miss five meetings straight <laughs> and it's like they could still come in and vote. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Okay. All right. It makes sense. But, I mean, but trust me, trust me that that happened. Uh, oh, I know. It does. Yeah. <laughs> so, happened in other LSEs, not, not in ours, right? <laughs> but I mean, yeah. we, we see it. Yes. I think it speaks to the idea you have to be somewhere consistently to have to it wrong with them. any fidelity, naturally, yep. in any realm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But I think also it's important to let know other LSE members that uh, when we said that uh, five meetings, we consider only uh, the regular meetings. So we're not including, this is, doesn't include for the special meetings. Okay. So, and in last meeting, I tried to address the reports for all the committees to make sure we stick with the timeline, which is two hours. And who's going to give the reports? Because I believe that if we have uh, two teacher reps in our LLC, they are the they are capable to give the reports. Both the teachers and the uh, PPLC. Any comment, any suggestion? Um, so you're, you're saying that um, for any reports made by the staff, you're saying it needs to be represented by the, the, uh, the, the teacher, the representatives that are on the board? Yes, that's correct. And the reason why I'm proposing that is because uh, it's a situation of order. Um, like you're saying, order okay. of our meetings, the order of our meetings. So I think that's conflicting because, um, you know, we obviously we work with other other people in the in the building, correct? And some of these uh, members, like for example, I don't think Mr. Caputi is on the PPLs. Or which one are you on? The, you're on the... Yes, he's the vice chair of the PPLC. Yeah, and the... Don is the head of the PPLC. Okay. But we have mm -hmm. um, other, right? We have other groups that they're not part of. And so when we give, when they give these reports, right? They have, they voted on a representative. And I thought that's what we were going with. Because I, as I, I mean, I could be wrong, but as I recall, we had spoken maybe like three meetings ago, and we had agreed that it was okay for their representative to speak at our meetings, since they're just giving their report. Uh, did you mean that, uh, for example, the athletic report is being given by Ms. Russo? Um, I mean, that's a similar situation, right? Um, you know, they obviously, I, I don't know exactly 
what, what role um, Caputi and Ms. Dunn have on each group. Um, I think Caputi is the he's the vice chair. Yes. And um, but their secretary is the one that was um, running the reports, correct? So you want the you want them to run it? Is that what you're asking? Yes, to be presented to the, I mean, one of the functions of the LLC is that in a monthly basis, we receive reports of the committees in the school, which includes not only PPLC, but includes BAC, PAC, athletic report. Uh, in the past, we had um, something of the school functioning. I don't remember exactly the name. And everyone brings a report to the LLC on a monthly basis. So, and usually, is usually the head of every committee okay. who comes to the LLC. And it is not only in statements, but it's mainly the way most of the schools function, right? So the head of the uh, of the of the each committee show up at the LLC meetings and give a report. Oh, okay. So the head of each committee will come and make yes. a report, correct? Okay. Yes, it's mostly the way you see in a, in a, in a general level. Okay, respectful. Yes. Thank you, Thank you. I'm sorry for questioning. No, 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 no. I, I clearly understand that there is, I mean, there is some members learning how the LLC runs and how is supposed to be, how our meetings are supposed to be conducted. Give me one second, I'm sorry. Thank you, I'm sorry. So, and it's part of the functioning of an LLC. And the main purpose is to be uh, productive and respect the timeline, which is two hours. Thank you so much. And also to maintain everyone in the same picture, right? Because I mean, it seems that uh, apparently our meeting since September uh, seems to be a lack of organization and they are kind of like disruptive because it seems that we are not in the same page. So the purpose of today's meeting is to come together and make sure we are getting into the same page and move forward. Go ahead, Mr. Caputi. Uh, that's fine. I won't belabor the point. I think Ms. Dunn and myself speaking for the PPLC, we have no problem delivering the report every month. Uh, we didn't feel, we thought anyone on the PPLC is just as qualified as we are. And we didn't feel it would uh, have any effect whatsoever on the length of the meeting, it would be identical. Uh, our thought was, it's just nice, since we're all equally qualified to have a diversity of um, people involved, uh, more stakeholders involved, a little more uh, different people presenting, you know, just kind of create a more family vibe and unified vibe by having different people on the PPLC rotate in. That was the thought. However, we have no problem with just Ms. Dunn and myself presenting it. If you want to just keep it uh, a little more narrow, uh, we have no problem doing that. Okay. Yes. And it's not a question of uh, qualifications. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone in the school is qualified, right? But I mean, in regard of uh, to give a, a more uh, a more sense of organization of our LLC, it's okay. mostly it's mostly the purpose of of that, and it's not only for PPLC; it's for all the committees and the school. And that the amendment could be added to the to this bylaws. That and also uh, that we are using the rubber rules of order to conduct our meetings. And it's not in our bylaws, but that's the way we are being conducting our meetings. 
And if anyone is not familiar with the rubber rules of order, I mean, I can send uh, the information over an email. If anyone need it, or I just go ahead and do it and send it to everyone for everyone review. Please, could you send that so I could just read up on that? Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay no, you're welcome. Uh, anything else in regard of the bylaws? No, okay. Well, uh, okay. So let me make a comment, Mr. Caputi, and then you can take the floor. Uh, one other observation that we have is that uh, public participation, I think it's important to give the opportunity not only to speak to the person that uh, take time to be in the meetings or take the time to send an, an email, whether we like it or we don't like it, we, whether we, we agree or disagree, I think the most important is to reflect transparency in our meetings. And we don't need to go word by word, but also I think it's important for the public and parents that show up at the meetings to maintain a, a I mean, a, a something sure in regard of any comment that comes to the LLC. Because that way we, we show up respect for anyone who comes to the LLC and bring a comment, suggestion, or whatever they feel they need to do so. So I would like to, as a part of the, of the amendment, and try to bring last, last meeting, which is to add public participation in our minutes. And I'm not sure if anyone has any comment. And feel free to do so. I would like the uh, members that are not speaking, feel free to make comments and share ideas. Okay, so what you're saying is Ms. basically Ms. Um, with the property. Um, Ms. Oden. Ms. Oden. Yes. Ms. Oden, give me one second. Mr. Caputi can erase his hand before you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm Let sorry. me give him the, yeah, no, it's okay. Let me give him the floor first and then you continue and after you, uh, Mr. Rolando. Go ahead, Mr. Caputi. I, I appreciate that, but I, I'll defer to them. I was just worried that we were wrapping up this part of the meeting without talking about public speaking, but Ms. Odin can go and then Mr. Rodriguez, I'm fine. Okay, and that's what I wanted to speak, speak about with the public speaking. So we can read anonymous letters and we can read or people can come and speak. So when they ask these questions and they speak upon this, whoever they're talking to or they're concerned with, does that person have chance to respond to that? Uh, we didn't really uh, specify that. Um, you know, about us, everything that it says is that uh, uh, not to engage in okay, dialogue. So, I mean, but I think okay. it's mostly. So that's, so I think that's it's kind of mostly. That's how I, I would feel attacked if I couldn't respond if, if someone is just saying something, or they could be speaking facts, or it could just be, um, I was bored and oh. someone just did something, and then nobody is able to respond. So we just we hear these things and we can't say anything about it. They could tear us to shreds, and none of us can say anything. Okay, so your your suggestion. So according to what I'm hearing is that your suggestion is that uh. We could respond under discussion. Yeah, like I mean, it would it, it, it just that that's the only way that anything would get clear because anybody can say anything, and then if the person doesn't have a rebuttal or a response, it's like that's a waste of time because now we're just listening to things that we can't even give that person clarity on or or speak you know speak on it. It's just like we're sitting mute as they say whatever they want to say. Okay, so the bylaws, the, I mean, uh, I changed some, well, I didn't change. I just write down the draft of that part that you're mentioning. So it could be the LSC will respond under discretion with the public right. and speaker. It could be a time limit. Yeah, it could be a time limit, but if it's something specifically to someone, they should be able to respond, you know? 
And it could be time to matter, point. and it could be professional. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm Yes, Just and that's, that's yes. Uh, pull it. Okay, so as I said, this this uh, bylaws were established with the previous LLC. So we readopt them in uh, July. So we can make amendments. That's okay. Right. Yeah. And that's, yes, and we can add that. So the bylaw might, might look like this. The LLC will respond on their discretion to the public as speaker. Okay. Uh, how about this when the situation became a discussion? Okay. Or yeah, set up a timeline. Okay. Because we have to be able to set up a timeline. I mean, if the person has like two minutes to talk, then the rebuttal should be like two minutes and in, in re response as well. With a limit of two minutes? Response? I mean, it's totally fair, yeah. Because they only have two minutes to say what they're going to say. So then it, it gives it gives some type of okay. dialect to go back and forth so that it's clarity. And then after that, during the meeting. Okay, so I think I said, Mr. Rolando, you're next. And then I see Mr. Quiles, uh, no, Dr. Vilches, and then Mr. Quiles, after Dr. Vilches. Go ahead, Mr. Rolando. Uh, hi, so um, in regards to this subject, um, I got a couple possibly suggestions. Um, so one, I think that if any problems are brought up by the community or parent, um, or a staff member through public participation, I think there should be a, a committee set to handle that situation. I don't think it should be addressed during the LSC meetings because that's deferring from the stuff that we're trying that we have on our agenda. And so it's gonna take up a lot of time. You know, we're already giving two hours. Um, we're gonna take away from all the things that we have on our agenda. So I think that those notes can be taken and followed up with a committee that can address that, including our um, administration. It, it can be an AP or a dean or a principal. It doesn't have to be specifically to one person. I don't want to put everything on, you know, Dr. Vilches because I, I already know what she, she does a lot here. But you know, it should be delegated to a certain group that that helps out with this. Um, it's gonna be too much for us to handle all this. And uh, secondly, I think you were talking about um, uh, recording those, um, like uh, those public participation minutes. Is uh, I don't think we should. I think that that should be addressed by that committee that I'm men mentioning about. Um, we could possibly get another AP to uh, come in to attend these meetings and they could jot down these notes. That way they can tackle that and it's kind of like a community outreach and it won't take up, like I said, time from the LSC meeting, from the stuff that we have to take care of, you know, our reports, you know, I feel like that's going to take up a lot of time. And so this is my solution to this. I think this is the, the way that we should go, but yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very like uh, uh, okay. Uh, Mr. No, Dr. Belchus is next. Yeah, I, I I also agree with uh, Rolando on this one. The thing is that with the public participation, we have to be careful because we have students on this LSC. And so if we're mm -hmm. saying that we publish public comments, we're opening them up to public scrutiny as well. So if someone wrote an email about one of our students, mm -hmm. we would have to publish. And then there's, there's social emotional aspects that go with it. So if we... Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. If we agree to publish the minutes, we're opening up our students to, because we take anonymous things, and I don't want to subject our students to that to that experience because they're minors. So the moment we say agree, when we agree to public comments being published, if someone writes public comments about our students or any student, then now we're publishing my information of minors, and so we're bordering on stuff that would be 
contradictory to, and I know the law department would have to look deeper into that piece because we do have minors here. Mm -hmm. Also with the responding to, uh, to public comments, there is an LSE final thoughts. I think that's the space where we can share, where we respond with one another, or like Rolando said, um, or Mr. Rodriguez said that, having an assistant principal jot down some things that, because I wouldn't, we wouldn't know if it's a viable thing or not, but at the end of the day, we're already hitting two hours without responding to public comments. How long is this then is going to take us away from going through an agenda and staying on task and with our priorities as an LSD if we're constantly being distracted by, by what is? Because we don't know if what is being submitted in public comments is true or not. But by, by the time we give response to it, we're never going to make it through an agenda anymore because we're right now without responding to public comments. We're not making we're barely making it to the seven o'clock mark. So two things is just being careful that whatever we agree to, we have to consider that we have minors in this group and we have students. And so as soon as we open up that that door, that uh, that box, we're making our students subject to and being vulnerable to public, the public which is what happened in a previous. And I don't, I don't want to subjugate our students to any of that. Um, and then again, responding to public comments, I think that if it's something that needs to be addressed, yes, we have the LSC final thoughts. We can have a circle discussion at, among the LSC, like how they do at board meetings. Um, but responding would take us way past the two hour mark and it's going to take us away from the work of the LSC that we are prioritizing for that agenda. Thank you, Dr. Belch and Mr. Kiles. Uh, yes, I would like to, well, first of all, I agree with uh, Ms. Odens, and I agree with uh, Rolando, and I agree with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Anna, Anna. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm driving. Dr. Roaches? Dr. Roaches, yes. But, but, you know, I, I believe that if the chairperson has the control of the meeting, and and it's something that she could say say that a parent comes in or a community rep uh, member from the street comes in and makes a comment uh our chair could indicate it uh you could make an appointment with the uh administration you can make an appointment with the community rep or you can make an uh, appointment with so, so and so but give them that option to respond because a lot of people go there and they wait for us to give them that participation and then we just look at them like well you know thank you but no thank you you know and and, and that's what uh, I think throws off a lot of the uh, people that come to our meetings that uh, they want to hear something but they can't and I that's why I agree with all three uh, that we should uh, come up with a solution uh, that could help out. Uh, I understand what Dr. Roaches is saying uh, about the student, uh, but I, I think that, you know, no matter what, you know, we're not going to come into a confrontation with anybody because when you say public participation, uh, you don't know what they're going to say. So it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, when it, when it says uh, that we're not going to uh, interject with this person, okay, that's fine. But if we could guide this person to the right person to respond to that person's question, I think that's 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 a good way to uh, conduct it. Thank you, Mr. Aquiles. Ms. Alden, do you need something to add? No, um, I, I was just saying like that does make sense um, so that it won't eat, eat into the two hour time because everybody is giving two hours of their evening, you know, every, you know, the one Tuesday out of the month and it's a lot to pack into that. So if, if, uh, if that did make a lot of sense, if there could be like a committee, just a buffer, because people shouldn't just get to blurt out whatever they want. A person has to eat it. There's no response. They're looking for a response. They get no response. It's like we're not engaging, but there needs to be some, you know, questions answered. 
with that or or to defend yourself or whatever. It, it has to be some type of dialect. And uh, Rolando made a lot of sense with it, ha- it. It can't be so much within the meeting because we have so much to cover in that two hour time span and we're not going over. So, yeah, we have to figure that out. But it gives a person to say what they feel and they get a response to that. Okay, and we have, I mean, according to these bylaws, we have 15 minutes for public participation. So we can figure it out to give the space if needed or if the situation requires uh, an appointment as Mr. Killers proposed, uh, redirect that person with the right um, school staff to speak its concern in a private because sometimes what we see in an LLC meetings is mostly, I mean, students or parents that come to talk about issues in regard of their own children. So. Or even parents that are misinformed, you know, um, our kids can be pretty slick when they want to be, you know, and they don't give the parents a hundred percent of what they need to know. And then you get parents that come that are really upset, you know, because they didn't know the full story. So yeah, that, that everybody made great sense with just trying to keep things under a control setting where things don't get rowdy. The children are still remain children and they're not really in, you know, exposed to that. Um, so yeah, we just have to figure that out. Hello, can you, are we here? I'm still here. I think Ms. Lopez is having a little connection issue. Mr. Quiles, are you still here? Yes, I am. I don't know if you guys I'm still that. here too. I think her connection may have been lost. We're going to have to continue with Mr. Keyless. Okay, thank you. I I wanted to also ask because I I kind of lost my connection uh, in the way, and I'm not sure that you also were including the situation of having uh, public participations on the agenda. Uh, was that uh, part of the uh, discussion that we're having now? You mean having public participation in the minutes or on the agenda? Yeah, yeah, no, in the minutes. You know, that once the minutes uh, that, that we do add, you know, who came in and, and the reason, uh, we don't have to go into details uh, because we have to be transparent. And I think by being transparent means that, hey, we could put it down. It, it, you know, I mean, if it... If it's uh, something with a student, I think that we could omit. Uh, but, uh, you know, we need to know and give the uh, public participation uh, the courtesy of having them in our minutes. I think that what they say, um, going back to that committee that I was talking about with uh, an assistant principal, I think that if it's something that needs to be addressed by the school, that committee uh, would be able to address it. Um, I, I think that we should obviously for sure have have their names. You know, we want to make sure that we're addressing uh, that we're recording their names at least. You know, we have people coming in, you know, um, let's say we have Ms. Longcom, we have Ms. Johnson to show up, or Mr. Caputi. We want to have that logged at least. I, I say that would be the least we would do. I don't think that what, they, what they're speaking about should be recorded, but just to be shown that they're there, I think that could be something that's addressed, or that could be something that's uh, noted. Mr. Caputi, I'm sorry, I lost. Go ahead. 
That's yeah, okay. I, I, I was saying that I agree with the committee that uh, uh, to be formed, that's, that, that would be fine. But, you know, in order for us to approve the minutes, we, we have to know what happened uh, because we cannot approve a minutes that some other committee puts together. I, 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 we, you know, that's kind of like not going with what we are doing. So, it, you know, we have to come somehow with a solution that we could work on it. Uh, I do agree, uh, Rolando, with the uh, idea of putting their names uh, and maybe uh, just just saying, okay, uh, Mr. Gomez came in and and was complaining about uh, uh, that his his student doesn't have a book. Period. That's it. Because then we guide them to the correct person, which it would be administration. Why this student doesn't have a book? That's that's that's. I mean, we don't have to put that in in the minutes, but we know that that happened. That's something that happened. We're transparent. So you want to you want to have like a generic response on? Uh, yeah, yes, post. yes. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. It just it will have to be like okay, parent came in complaining about hallways. Bam, parent came in complaining about attendance. Bam, and then. That's it. That's it. Okay, for sure. That that's it. Because if I read the minutes and I wasn't in the meeting, I I could ask the question that we did we address these problems. Now, now, where where would we follow up with that? You get me? That's that's where I'm going at. Well, like, you see, when 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 we do the the minutes before we approve the minutes, it's open for discussion, right? Somebody could come in in the discussion and say, were these issues addressed, period. We so, don't have to go into details. So I think, I mean, this com this conflicts with what we were, what we voted on or what we agreed on about having uh, a chairperson from each, uh, each group. No, represent. because if it's public participation, it's not the reports. But this public participation is being addressed by administration. You get what I'm saying? So would that fall under, uh, like, the principal report? No, because, you see, uh, yeah, it could follow under the principal report. She could later on say, uh, when she's doing her report, we address this item if somebody is asking. I mean, that's being transparent because yeah. right, right now, right now, uh, somebody could come in and say something like like what happened last week. You know, all the people that spoke, they're not even going to be in the minutes. So who cares? You know what they said, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking to be transparent and making sure that everybody is accountable for what they came to the meeting for. Okay, for sure. Uh, man, I respect that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Mr. Caputi, go ahead. The floor is yours. Uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, I agree with everything everyone said, so I just got two two quick comments. Uh, number one, I think I can speak for Ms. Dunn. She's not here. Uh, Ms. Dunn and I have no problem putting public comment in the minutes. We have no problem not doing it. We were just trying, we were getting mixed messages from LSC relations and then from, from this committee. We're fine with putting uh, public comment in the minutes. In fact, I agree that that makes sense. They're the public. They came in here to speak and that should do. And I'm fine with letting people respond to public comments. I have no one has any problem with that. And I'm fine with not letting them. We I'll go whatever we want to go. I just want to make sure that the um, bylaws that we make are equally uh, enforced for all members of the council. What Ms. Dunn and I were noticing is that at some some meetings, one in particular, um, people were not allowed to respond to public comment, myself specifically, sec, uh, while at the last meeting people were. So which side are we on? Also, there was a time when at that same October 11th meeting, Ms. Dunn, she wanted to respond to public comment and she was made to sign up for public comment and then get her own two minute public comment. And no one had to do that at the last meeting when people were responding. So 
she and I are fine with all of this. We just want to make sure that we have rules that are abided by the entire council rather than just the teacher reps. So we just want to make sure there's a quality of enforcement. We were concerned about that. Number two, real quick, I think the issue we're dancing around here is LSC relations made it real clear, and we can choose to agree with this or not, that LSC meetings are not to address personnel issues. The only personnel addressed at LSC meetings is the principal to the evaluation, so on and so forth. But personnel issues, you know, complaining about an individual, uh, that's not the realm of the LSC. That's not the purview of the LSC. That's something that needs to be taken up with the principal, right? So this, and so I'm agreeing with you guys, we need to have some discretion here. This notion that any anonymous letter sent in or any comment, we just got to let them say it because it's an open meeting. If someone sent an email that said, I want you to count from one to a thousand consecutively, and that's it, and we sit here for two minutes and count one, two, three, that's not the spirit of public comment. And we can check with law. We can check with Ms. Durden Jackson, who just, who just joined. I think the chair uh, is allowed to have some discretion to say to uh, an email just asking us to count to a thousand for public comment. We can say that that is not the realm of the LSC. I think we, we can, there, there's room for that in the Open Meetings Act. Similarly, personnel issues. If you get an anonymous email that specifically attacks personnel in the building, I think the chair or vice chair can exercise the discretion of saying, we appreciate your concern. This is not within the purview of the LSC. If you, uh, we recommend you take this up uh, with the principal. Right, so this notion that we just have to just repeat anything that's sent to us, and Ms. Jordan Jackson can can comment on this, or we can check with law. Um, I, don't, I don't think Mr. that's. Mr. Caputi, I can I can answer that to you because I know I mean you have that concern, and it's not the first time you have expressed that. But I mean, as an LLC chair and as an LLC member, because I'm an LLC member just like you are, I have no discretion to decide whether I want or I don't want to read an email. If the email comes with a title that read under public participation, according to law and the Open Meeting Act, I have to read it. Otherwise, I'm going to incur in a violation to the Open Meeting Act. Ms. Jardine Jackson can, can I mean, she can, she can also mention it, but I mean, that, that's the way it is, and that's as is. So as an LSC members, we have to um, align ourselves to some, um, well, well, to some requirements and we have to follow. So it doesn't reflect what we think and what we would like to do. And that's the way the LSC has to be run and keep the purpose of the LSC moving. So if we, in the same direction. So if you so, received a letter that just said, I want you to count to a thousand. You would have to sit there and count to a thousand. And also if the LSC relations, the, uh, the LSC, uh, does not cover, uh, personnel issues. It's not even within the purview of the LSC. Is that something we can choose to not address in public comment? I don't know if Ms. Durden Jackson can help us with, with these. I'm not the chair, so I'm nervous, Ms. Durden Jackson. I don't know if. Mr. Keyless wants to acknowledge you or not. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I I, I don't know if we lost uh, Ms. Uh, Lopez. Okay, but, we lost her. Yeah, she, she's disconnected again. So okay. you're, uh, Ms. Jackson, uh, Ms. Durden Jackson is asking for the floor. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the floor. I, uh, Mr. Caputi has some that. But with public participation, 
anyone from the public can potentially say anything, right? But as uh, Director Kishasha Ford Williams stated, the public participation is not the LSC business, okay? If you read an email for public participation and it potentially may uh, out personnel, I like the way the previous LSC handled that by not mentioning names. They read the public participation email, but did not mention personnel names. Now, I know you all last week about making items uh, a part of the record for public participation, but remember, public participation is not the business of the LSC. Now, if you put in to do so, my recommendation is you all keep it consistent and put all issues of public participation in the or you leave them out. The OMA states that the minutes are a summary of what happens in the meeting, not word for word. So if you put public participation in the minutes, you're potentially putting word for word. Now, if you all agree to do that in your bylaws and law approves it, that's another, you know, situation. But I says be consistent, uh, which, you know, there were some issues where certain things that our LSC member wanted to be put in for public participation and it was not allowed. And now you're stating you want public participation because the issue that a parent brings up. But you all have to remember when public participation comes, not everything that is stated in public participation business and the purview of the LSC. That's helpful. And what I'm hearing from you is there is some room for discretion on the part of the chair by, for example, leaving names off. Uh, anonymously, we say we don't, we're not compelled to, uh, by the Open Meetings Act to simply parrot what appears in a letter. We can adjust uh, with some discretion names, uh, so on and so forth. What was the the uh, the individual that read it stated that he was not going to put potential names out because that was given information of certain individuals that were staff members. I just referenced that, but I mean, I would take some discretion in that. I mean, you cannot control what people put out in public participation. Right, but you can't control if it's put on the record. That's helpful. So there is some there is some wiggle room there. It is some. I, I, I the thing about it is, if law approves for you all to put public participation on on your uh, minutes, they will have to give you that information. You know, our recommendation is a summary. Uh, just state in public participation who spoke and what they spoke about. And remember, anything that has to do with personnel and students should be directed to the principal. Exactly. Right. Who states, I will schedule a meeting with that individual. I will schedule a meeting with that parent. Call me so we could take care of this issue because the operation of the school and personnel is the responsibility of the principal. The LSC evaluates the principal on they carry out their responsibility. Thank you. That's very enlightening. I appreciate that. I really agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I like the discretion of if we read uh, stuff from the public, names are kept out of it because it, that's just, it's unprofessional to me. So if we could just leave names out of it, they could say what they want to say, but if we omit the name, it was said, but nobody is being put on the spot like that. Well, yeah, Ms. Long, and I think really any identifying information. So Exactly. So like when we uh, talk about budget, we don't say the type, we say position numbers, but we don't deal with anything that would identify that individual because in some places it may be one person. So even if you don't say the name and you give the title, it still identifies that information. So we're going to move forward with this discussion. Now, the 
clarity we would need is that do we have to include in our bylaws that when reading public comments that we would remove names and all identifying information, Ms. Jackson? So that would be the recommendation of law. Oh, okay. uh, I said that the law department will have to give you that information. Oh, and we, the law department will have to approve your bylaws before you can make them. Um, so my recommendation is you discuss what you want to put on your bylaws. We send it to uh, the law department for approval. They let you all know if they're going to approve your bylaws and with the stipulations that they will approve your bylaws with. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so to recap, because I'm having an internet issues, is that uh, in that line is going to, we're going to make an addition to go under discretion to avoid using uh, a specific names? Or how you guys decided to add it? So I can write it down. I think we said, uh... The chairperson or whomever reads any letter or email via public uh, comment shall uh, use discretion. In other words, they're not beholden to a word for word repeat of the letter. They should hold or they should use discretion to eliminate names or any personal identifying information because personnel or issues are not within the purview of the LSC. Again, because what? I'm sorry? Because personnel issues are not within the purview of the LSC. And we said, it, when he said names, it would be also include any identifying information. Right, and that's just- Or any, or any, Identify Ident information. Okay. okay. And that just seems like common sense. Information. Okay. So I go back to the line that the LSC will respond under discretion with two minutes. Uh, with two minutes response. And the meeting. And then chairperson will read. Uh, Emails will use discretion in names because personnel are not in the purview or domain. Purview or, or domain. Okay. Or the LSC. Purview or domain of the LSC or any identified information. Okay. Uh, Ms. Jackson said we wouldn't respond because a public comments is not within the purview of the LSC. You can let them know that if it's a personnel matter, the principal to email or call the principal. If it's an uh, issue with operations, to call the principal. So that would be the response. We don't respond if it's a something that's beholden to what the principal is supposed to handle. Then that would be the right. response was the recommendation. Okay. I need to ask to LM show, show it. If this person is an LSC member. I am not an LSC member, I'm a parent. Okay, uh, I apologize for that, but I mean, public can only speak during public participation. Correct, right. And, okay, and you have your hand raised. Oh! <laughs> I realize I'm, sorry, you my I'm so sorry. I can no, that's right. Cool. I'm sorry, guys. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, I saw Mr. Kiles hand up. No, I just had a quick question. So, so for example, I sent an email and I I introduced myself as the person uh, sending the email. My name could appear on the on the public participation, uh, and we we already have heard that yes, we don't get into personnel. That's that's administration. Uh, 
and that's fine. So what we're saying is that we will revise uh, the email, and if it does have a name of a person, we'll submit that name out, uh, but still could read the complaint. Is that clear? Is that what uh, the understanding is? That's my understanding. This is Kakuti, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we would read the complaint without any uh, identifying information of personnel or staff or students. Um, and the, it would be a standard response that if it's within the purview of operations that um, for the, to email the principal or to call the school and speak to the principal or whoever is over that department. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, so we're done with the bylaws. Any other comment? Okay, we move forward with the next item, which is principal evaluation. And in regard of the principal evaluation, we usually uh, evaluate uh, a prior year. So, which means that uh, this administration is not responsible for last year. So, we have to come to a decision on how we are going to evaluate this year. And we have two options, whether to, to, uh, to use that uh, chief evaluation or setting up goals and how we can evaluate. Because it's not fair to evaluate a new person, a new administration for past year administration. And I don't know if Ms. Jackson can give more clarification about the process of uh, principal evaluation this year because we have a new administration. Do I have the floor, Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so you will not use previous assessment data. You could choose not to use previous assessment data. Uh, however, uh, Dr. Vilches began July 1st and within the realm of the uh, eva evaluation process is that the LSC collects evidence from fall until spring. So potentially, basically, you can evaluate on the evidence that you have collected from uh, essentially the, uh, the beginning of the fall until uh, March or April through her principal's report, uh, any uh, anything that she gives you to evaluate her on. Now, you, the LSC will come together and discuss how they will evaluate their principal for the first annual evaluation. However, you are correct, last year's data doesn't count, but the data for this year will potentially be used on the second round of the evaluation in the fall. That's the one that's due November 1st. Remember there are two evals, one that's due in the spring for the professional practice, and then the second eval that involves the data assessment and school reports that you gather uh, that you will assess the principal on. So Dr. Velchez has put in a full year, so you potentially could have uh, collected data, but it is at the discretion of the LSC and the discussion of the LSC. And my recommendation is that you will uh, hold a meeting and go into a closed executive session to discuss that. Okay, thank you for your recommendation. So, what LSC members? 
wants to say about it. Any comments? Well, suggestions. Go ahead, Mr. Aquiles. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that uh, our our first evaluation is in May, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ms. Jackson. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay, so so I would suggest that in our next LSC meeting uh, that we set up uh, a time and a date uh, so we could uh, go into executive session uh, for the evaluation that is coming up. Okay. Okay, nobody else? Uh, quick question, Ms. Durden Jackson. Can can we ask the network chief for a report or a portion of the eval? Madam Chair, do I have the floor? Yes, Ms. Jackson, go ahead. Okay, now the the chief's the chief's evaluation is not until after the LSC evaluates. So the chief's evaluation is June. June 2023, I think June 15th or something like that. After the LSC votes on the on the professional practice and presents the evaluation to the chief, then the chief evaluates the principal after the LSC evaluates. So you have to evaluate, and then the chief evaluates after. Thank you. So to answer your question, there is no evaluation on the, uh, the principal at this moment. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Okay. So we move to the next item. Which oh, I, sorry, can I can yeah, have Dr. a question? Yeah, um, I just have a question, or not really a question, like um, when you go into closed session, if there's a list of things that I know that my principal reports are already aligned to the the principal competencies for the old the the framework that's currently being used by uh, let's see which is the letters A through E. So if there's any additional evidence that's requested, um, I just ask that it be communicated so that I can prepare for all of you and in what format you would prefer it to. If it's going to be digital because we're still uh, virtual until the until May or if you want it printed and in a binder system. So all I ask is that um, however you want it presented to you that I know. And I ask that I'm okay with transparency in terms of like when you guys go into closed session um, in terms of my practice. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Vilches, I, I think you are being uh, in timeline presenting your uh, your reports uh, in the way that you you divide the item by item, and it's been clear for the past for the past meetings. I will put it under your discretion to create that binder. Do you want to? But otherwise, I think most of the LSC members have re have view all the reports, and we have the we have enough materials to go over an evaluation. For me, I will put it uh, over uh, on you under your discretion. But I think I have uh, enough elements to go to an evaluation. Anyone else? Okay, so we move forward to the last item of the agenda, which is a protocol for our LSE meetings. Uh, I'm not sure how many of the LSE members have been, uh, have used time to go into the trainings. And they are available already in the LSE, in the LSE website. So you can review, record, record items there. 
And the only difference is the certification. We arrive like uh, two, three weeks after you take the trainings. And actually, it's a great tool to, to obtain the knowledge we need to, to move more, uh, more secure about what an LLC member implies to be. And we have a, a very good details and information to help ourselves to be a good LLC members and productive. So if anyone wants to go to the website, it's LLC, LLC training webpage, and you can find all the uh, trainings there. And in regard to that, I'm bringing that over because since that uh, our meetings are a little bit lack of organization, uh, there are a few things that how we are running our meetings uh, with the rubber rules of order. So we have to present motions. We have to second motions. We have to go on voting by name. And we have to... We didn't get that in our bylaws, but I mean, imply that we have to use yes, no, or abstains for each motion. And also, uh, when we want to speak, we ask for the floor, and we wait to receive the floor, and then make comments. And every single LSC member has the right to give suggestions, opinions, or bring something up, but should be related to the agenda and the items established in the agenda. And as you're being able to notice is that in our agenda, there is always some items specified there, like a share report, a principal's report, budget, internal accounts, uh, committee's reports, and and has a whole structure that we have to follow to make sure we maintain that two, two hours limit that we set up. Um, I think it's kind of like at set, but I mean, Ms. Southern, go ahead, you have the floor. Ms. Southern? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I pressed. Um, can I please have the LSC training website? That's all I was wondering. Um, I've been needing that. Sure. I can forward that to you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, any comment? Okay, uh, go ahead, Doug. Uh, Dr. Rich has just shared a document with us. Sorry, I was uh, sending the link uh, for the LSC trainees. But this one is something, no uh, yes it is, right? No, ignore the report fishing at CPS. That's report spam. That is just a report spam because I got hacked and it's still saved in my. No, I've been having to report spam. No, the second link is the LSC training website. Thank I see you. it. I see it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kiles, go ahead. You have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I I just wanted to congratulate everybody because I think this was a very constructive and uh, learning uh, experience uh, meeting today. And I hope that we continue uh, moving forward and uh, being as transparent as we have been uh, with uh, the community uh, and uh, the teachers and, and, and our students. So uh, I want to congratulate everybody for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aquiles. Okay, if there is no more comments to add to this meeting, 
it is 6 26 p.m and we can adjourn so there's no more comments i second okay so i present formally the motion to adjourn the meeting at 6 26 p.m mr Aquila second roll call for vote please dr Vilches. yes Mr. Cross said he's second first, but he just wanted to let him. You guys oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Ms. Lopez? Yes. Mr. Keyless? Aye. I'll say yes. Ms. Odin? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez? Orlando? He has left them. Oh, he's back. Yes, I'm sorry. I clicked the wrong button. No worries. Uh, Ms. Merlos? Yes. Uh, Ms. Hansen? I'll come back to Ms. Destiny Johnson? Present. Say yes, too. Yes. All right. Ms. Hansen? Is she? I don't see her anymore. I don't and either. Know. Looks like she dropped off. Maybe. So okay. Nine in favor. I don't What should I say? One. One, two, three. Yep. Nine in favor. Motion carries. Motion pass. Okay. Motion pass. So our meeting is adjourned. Thank you guys. Have a good one.